A few weeks ago, y'all saw the video where I was like blown out of the freaking water with my new MacBook Pro and how it can edit and how quick it can export and all the things. But something I realized I never talked about on this channel was the fact that I even started editing with Final Cut Pro. So I used to edit exclusively with Premiere Pro for most of my career here on YouTube until about a year ago when I made the switch over to Final Cut Pro. And since I haven't talked about it on here, I thought I would share why I made that switch in case you're trying to decide between the two programs or maybe you're looking to switch or whatever and what I like and dislike about each program compared to each other. So hopefully this will be a fun, information-driven editing video. Hey, howdy, hey, y'all, and welcome back to my channel. I am so pumped that you are here. If you are new here, my name's Jessica Stansberry. Hello. If you're not new here, welcome back. So we need to really go into a bit of a story time to explain why I switched from Premiere Pro to Final Cut Pro because it was kind of out of necessity rather than me just wanting to switch. I honestly, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be as honest as I know how to be here. I didn't really know that Final Cut Pro was an Apple or Mac specific program before I switched to it. I know. I don't, I don't know what hole I was living in. I really don't. I, but I really did not know that it was built for Mac. I just knew it was an editing platform. I knew it was one that people used. That was the extent of it. I'm an Adobe girl through and through. I've been using Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, all of those since college. I love me a good, you know, Adobe program. And so my natural inclination was just to use Premiere. And that's what I have been using since I stepped away from iMovie like four years ago. And it has done me just fine. I've never really had any issues with Premiere Pro until I bought this big fancy 4K monstrositous camera. I had a 4K camera before, but the file sizes on that 4K camera versus the file sizes on this one with 422 10-bit footage and you know, all the fancy things that it has were drastically different. And so once I got this camera, which I have the a7S III, I have everything linked below that I use in all my videos. But um, once I got this camera, I started realizing that something just wasn't like it just my computer couldn't handle it. Like that's basically the thought process I had was like my computer can't hand handle this footage, right? Like I don't know what's wrong, but my computers cannot handle this footage. And honestly, I just chalked it up to the fact that, you know, these were massive files and I knew that they were. So I looked up ways to edit better, I guess, or more efficiently in Premiere. And that's when I discovered proxy files. Up until that point, I hadn't really even, even known what proxy files were or had ever used them. So I got this a7S III about this time last year. So um, about a year ago was when I started having all of these problems, but I wasn't willing to give up the camera. I needed to make the editing software work for me, right? So I started using proxy files, no big deal. I have an iMac that is specced out from like 2018 or 19. And once I started using proxy files, it ran fairly decently on this computer. Nothing too totally crazy. Enter me getting a studio last year, which y'all watched the journey of. I got a studio. I loved my studio, then I didn't love my studio, I turned it into a store and I sold it. But nonetheless, I had a studio. And myself and Laura, my full-time assistant, were working full-time in the studio. Well, that's not true. I wasn't working full-time in the studio, but she was. And there was no world where me like taking my laptop back and forth was going to be efficient because I couldn't edit on my laptop. Like at this point, once these files were so big, to put them on my iMac was the best I could do on my laptop, it would just freeze up, it was done, it was not having it, right? Especially in Premiere. So me carrying my laptop back and forth was not gonna work, me taking my iMac was not gonna work because what if I needed to edit here? What if I needed to edit there? Like, there was just not a good solution. And the same thing with Laura, she had been operating on her own MacBook Air, and I knew that it wouldn't handle some of the things she needed to do, specifically once we started to ramp up like video production and things like that. So I ended up getting 
two of the M1 Mac Minis, which was like the first thing they put the M1 chip in. And let me tell you, those things ran and still run like butter, like butter. But Premiere Pro was still lagging quite a bit on them and we still had to make proxy files. The process of making proxy files was like a long process. Like I would have to start the process the night before or it would take several hours. And so it was really delaying the editing schedule, you know? And so I finally like did some research and realized that Adobe hadn't really released a version of Premiere for the M1 chip yet. They have now, but they hadn't at the time. And that, you know, that's why it wasn't doing super well, even though this M1 chip was like lightning fast. And so I ended up just saying, okay, well, let's try out Final Cut Pro because during all of my research, that's when I realized that Final Cut Pro was a Mac program. I know, I know, I'm sorry. We do the trial. I think you can do like a 90 day trial of Final Cut Pro. So we do the trial and it ran so well on those M1 Mac minis. Like especially coming off of Premiere and us being frustrated, we were in shock. Like it ran so amazingly well. And so I was like, okay, well let's try it here at home. So I put it on my iMac and on my MacBook and same thing. I still had to make proxy files on, especially on my iMac and definitely on my MacBook Pro that I had, but like on my MacBook Pro, which again is like the 2017 model, Premiere at this point wouldn't even open and stay open with these big files that come out of this camera. So just being able to even open the program was, you know, better than before. And on my MacBook, if I would plug in an external hard drive and edit from the external hard drive on Final Cut, it would do just fine. So that was kind of the decision maker was like, okay, well, professionals are using Final Cut just as much as they're using Premiere Pro. And it's actually working on the computers we have. And I feel like this is a good move. So I ended up purchasing Final Cut Pro, and um, that's what we've been using to edit ever since. I mean, I hadn't been able to edit a video on my MacBook Pro in like years at this point, really, um, unless I was prepared for it to like buffer every two seconds. And with the addition of an external hard drive and Final Cut Pro, I actually could, which made a massive difference in my workflow. And Lord, y'all, now with this new MacBook Pro, chef's kiss like it's like it's so good y'all saw the video but i just like that's how it happened it happened out of necessity it happened because i bought an m1 chip in a mac mini and couldn't get premiere to work now i know there's a lot of like talk about davinci resolve and all of that but i have honestly never tried it um probably should have you know like probably should have tried it before i just like threw down you know 300 dollars or whatever the final cut pro license is but all of that to say, I have no comparison with DaVinci, Final Cut, and Premiere. Um, I would like to, like in this video, I'm going to get Premiere on my new MacBook Pro and kind of test out both it and Final Cut on the same project and see, you know, what we can see is any different. Like, are there different export speeds? Is it working just as fine now? And then all of my points are moot if you have an M1 Max chip in a MacBook Pro. So we'll see, but that was my decision. And honestly, if we're being totally honest here, I think if you are on a Mac and you're Mac exclusive, I really think that Final Cut Pro is the way to go because it's literally built for Mac and it's built by Mac or Apple. And so like everything is kind of built to work together. So that's kind of my opinion there, but I will say there's some differences. Um, some that I like about Premiere that I don't love about Final Cut and vice versa, but none of the differences, even if I liked the way Premiere did it better, really made me regret switching or have, you know, caused me any issues. So I'm gonna run through these and then I'm gonna, uh, you know, pull up a nice little project on my new MacBook Pro and see if we can see any major differences, especially now with the M1 chip. But I also know that not everybody is gonna have the M1 chip, and even without the M1 chips, even on my iMac, which has the Intel chip and my old MacBook Pro, the switch to Final Cut Pro was totally worth it. The cost. 
the cost is definitely a difference. First of all, with Premiere Pro, it is an Adobe program, so if you're already paying for the Creative Cloud, like I am, then um, you know it's included in your plan. So I was already paying like $60 a month or something like that for the Creative Cloud, for Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and some other programs I was using. So Premiere was just included in that. Um, but if you aren't paying for any of those other programs, Premiere is about $21 a month if you just want Premiere in an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, okay? So like $21 a month versus Final Cut Pro is a one-time fee of 300 bucks, okay? And I know that there are so many different opinions here. Like some people are like, I don't wanna pay anything monthly. I will just pay the upfront cost because I don't wanna pay monthly. Some people are like, I can't afford $300. So I'm gonna have to pay $21 a month. Like I get all of the differences there, but the cost of them is definitely a difference. But I can't honestly say which one is better or worse because I honestly think that's subjective. Like if you like to pay for things monthly, you're gonna like Premiere Pro better. If you like to pay one-time fees, you're gonna like Final Cut Pro better on the cost. So that one's kind of a toss up and is subjective and dependent on what you like. Now, the next little thing that I noticed a difference on is ease of use. And this is coming from an Adobe girl. Like I love me some Adobe. My first blog was called I Heart Photoshop. Like, Really, I, <laughs> I love Adobe. I love everything about all their programs. Um, I'm very familiar with Adobe. And if you're familiar with one Adobe program, the other ones kind of come pretty easily because a lot of the things are the same. And still all of that taken in consideration, I do think Final Cut Pro is easier to use. I think that it leans on the easier side of use. I think it leans on the less tools and more minimal approach to editing and is really, really similar to iMovie when it comes to you know, how it works. So people who are coming from something super simple and easy like iMovie are probably going to have an easier time going to Final Cut than Premiere. And even if you're an Adobe person, I really think Final Cut is just way easier to use. There's less frills. There's less like weird things that you have to do. It's, it's, yeah, I think it's just a little bit easier to use. Now, color grading. I had just gotten good at color grading my footage from my a7s3 in Premiere Pro. So when I first got this a7s3, I watched a ton of tutorials and so many of the creators that I look up to were like shoot in S-Log3 or S-Log2 or S-Log or whatever, because it comes out a super flat image. Like I'll show you what it comes out looking like, but then you can color grade it in a more professional way and in, you know, more of a way of what like you want, right? Um, and so that's what I was doing. I was shooting in S-Log, three, two, I don't remember. And learning to color grade S-Log footage is not an easy feat. And I had just kind of felt like I did it. Like I had gotten to the point where I felt good about the changes I needed to make and the color grading to get it from S-Log to, you know, looking good, right? And then I switched to Final Cut Pro. And color grading is so different in Final Cut Pro that I was struggling. Um, at the time I was in my studio, so my lighting was a little weird anyway, a little different than what I'm used to here in my home office because I had like a black wall and we were using all, you know, not natural light and just different things like that. And this S-Log footage, I had a really, really hard time learning how to color grade in Final Cut. I just feel like it's not as easy it's not as like straightforward however that being said i do think now a year into using final cut pro that it is just as easy to color grade but it's just done so differently so if you're coming from the premiere world it's going to be weird and different so in premiere you have like adjustment layers and so you can like swing all of like let's say you make an adjustment and you want to apply it to the whole project, you can definitely do that pretty easily and quickly. Where in Final Cut, while there are like plugins and things you can use to have a similar experience, the out of the box experience is that you have to apply those edits to each clip, which 
is kind of cumbersome, but I adjusted my editing style to make sure I was editing and color grading before I touched anything so it wasn't a big deal. I still feel like Premiere definitely wins the game a little bit in color grading, but I've seen other creators who I know are shooting in like amazingly awesome S-Log footage color grade just the same in Final Cut Pro. So I will fully admit that this is not my expertise and that uh, probably a lot of my experience here is just because like that's not my like main thing, you know? Another difference is obviously that Final Cut Pro is Mac specific. You can't even use it on a PC. It is Mac only and that's that. Whereas Premiere can be used anywhere. So if you are someone who maybe has a, you know, a PC desktop, but a MacBook or vice versa, something like Premiere is probably going to be better for you than something like Final Cut where you can't even use it on your PC driven systems. But for me, I really enjoy that it's Mac specific because again, they obviously pushed out the M1 Max chip update situation to the program as soon as that was a thing. Um, we don't have to wait on massive updates when Apple updates for this software and it's just built for Apple so it runs better on the system. So again, that is one of those things that's subjective, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, that it's Mac specific or you know Mac only, um, but I personally like that. And I will say one of the last things I wanna talk about on the differences is I do think that that Final Cut Pro projects are a little harder to collaborate across a cloud system than like Premiere Pro projects. So let me explain. There were several times before we switched to Final Cut Pro and before we got our studio where I would put the footage in Dropbox and then Laura, my assistant, who's not here in my home office with me, who's at her house, would get the footage off of Dropbox, right? And then pull it into Premiere and just chop out all of the like ums and you know weird parts where I don't want to like leave it in. And then the the way she would do it is that project that she was working on in Premiere would automatically save to Dropbox. So I could just go right back in and open the actual project on my Premiere Pro program here at my house. So there was like an easy way to collaborate. I mean, there were definitely like holes in that system because like Dropbox would have to sync up and you know, blah, blah, blah. But for the most part, it wasn't that hard to collaborate on projects. Whereas Final Cut Pro, while you can put the libraries and the projects and things into Dropbox, that also means that my computer is editing from Dropbox, which is not ideal. I wanna use the actual hard drive on my computer, especially now with my new MacBook Pro. So while you could do that, it's definitely not as easy and it slows down the editing process on both ends. So for us to collaborate on an actual like project within, within the system, it is a lot harder. But that's not to say it's impossible or that we can't do that. I just think it's a little bit harder and there's a lot more workarounds around it. And it's not really something we do anymore. So we just kind of adjusted our process for that, you know, thing that we don't love very much. Overall, I'm super glad I switched. I'm super glad we made the switch over to Final Cut Pro. I'm really glad that I did it before I got the new MacBook Pro. And, um, you know, that's my only experience is like pulling up Final Cut Pro and it being amazing. I really am glad that I switched. If you are coming from something, like I said, like iMovie, like you've been editing on iMovie for a year or two or five or whatever, you're going to have a much easier time going to Final Cut Pro because it's basically the same interface. There's just a lot more tools and a lot more flexibility. Whereas Premiere Pro is a completely different interface. So I think a lot of the things are subjective and what you need, whether you work on a PC or a Mac, whether you wanna pay monthly or all at once, and you know some of the other things that I talked about. But overall, the exact same things can be done in any editing program ever. Like in Premiere, in Final Cut, in DaVinci, anything that's on that top level of editing software, really anything could be done on any of them. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull out my MacBook Pro and we're gonna pit these two against each other with the exact same clip and with us like color grading and whatever else and see which one truly runs faster or does better on the new M1 Max MacBook Pro. 
Okay, so full disclosure, I had never even installed Premiere on my MacBook Pro, my new one, um, because I don't plan on using it. And I'm installing it, and it is definitely taking longer to open than Final Cut Pro. I'm actually a, f a little afraid <laughs> to start QuickTime, because I'm like, mm, will it lose its mind? Maybe? It might? I don't know. So we're going we're gonna to try it here. Let's see. Okay. I have Premiere open. I'm just going to create a new, it's been a while since I've worked in Premiere. I'm just going to create a new project here. It's like, just call it test. What I'm going to do is just open up or create a project out of one of my other videos that was like 15 minutes long and then go ahead and add like some color correction, things like that to it and export it from both. And I feel like that'll give us like a good, you know, a good look at this. So basically both of these, I'll be pulling a clip out of Dropbox because I can access one there pretty easily. So I'm just going to pull that over. It has been a minute. I'm just going to drag it over. Now I'm going to try and scrub the footage. Which is working pretty great in Premiere. Okay. All right. Let's add some adjustment layers. I forget all my keyboard shortcuts. I'm literally having to Google how to add an adjustment layer. Like it is so funny how you like forget things so quick. Okay, by the way, this is not 4K footage that I'm pulling in because it's from my vlog camera. Probably should have done 4K, but that's okay. So I'm gonna drag this over and do some color correcting on it do, 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 do. okay and then let's just do some audio corrections on this okay now let's see it's still running like great without any proxy files now again it's 1080p it is not 4k but my other laptop wouldn't have done that <laughs> so <laughs> let's put it that way so this is right at a 15 minute clip. I'm gonna go ahead and export it and just see. We're gonna make sure we export in H.264. High bit rate. Let me make sure I'm putting it in the right place. Export that and see how long this takes. Oh, I guess I should start a timer. Okay, so that exported in two minutes and 34 seconds. I did let it run a few seconds longer to make up for my me not starting it quick enough. Um, but two minutes and 34 seconds it exported at, uh, you know, 1080p to Dropbox. Like, that's not bad. All right, Premiere, you may win me back. Although probably not. I just spent $300 or, you know, not long ago, spent $300 on. But let's just go ahead and open Final Cut Pro and kind of do the same thing, see if it lags anywhere or anything. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag the exact same clips over. I will say it opens a lot faster, uh, Final Cut does. Um, and I do think I heard the fans turn on when Premiere was exporting that, but y'all, they're so friggin' quiet on this thing. I don't, I don't even know. I am just going to start a new project here and just do test. And this is Final Cut, same thing. We're scrubbing pretty easy. Um, let's add some, some like color. We're just gonna add random color things to it just to kind of make it, I don't know, freak out a little, I guess, if you will. And then we'll also add some audio because I did that earlier. We're gonna get rid of the echo. Some weird audio, but all right. Same thing, I mean, it's pretty much like color corrected, <laughs> not corrected, but you know, we've added some things. Um, so let's just go ahead and export this. Same thing, I'm gonna do it in here, hit save and start. And we'll see how long it takes. I should also say that for both of these exports, Chrome is running in the background um, and QuickTime was running on both of them. Y'all, Premiere is gonna beat Final Cut in this export time. Not by much, not by much, but it is. Cause we're already right at the time it took 
and we have about 10% left, but I mean, it's flying through it, but it's still going to beat it for sure. I also wonder if I didn't give it enough time to import the clips, but all right, it's done. 250. So it took 20 more seconds. <laughs> basically to export in Final Cut. But I do wonder if I didn't give Final Cut enough time or as much time as Premiere to like import everything um, because I kind of rushed it along. But you could see here in my like little test how like everything in Final Cut is very drag and drop, whereas everything in Premiere is very like hunt and find it. And once you know it, you know it. Uh, but now that I'm used to Final Cut, I don't think I could go back to Premiere, but it's good to know that it works just as well. It's funny because one of the biggest requests I get is for editing videos, and I am by no means an expert. I have been editing videos for, you know, 15 years or more, but, I'm not an expert and I definitely am learning as I go and as I need to learn things for my own videos. But hopefully this can act as a really good comparison from a YouTuber's perspective, from someone who has all Macs, from someone who's had the Intel chip Mac and the M1 chip Mac and all the things to show you like which one kind of wins the race if you're looking to upgrade to one of these higher level editing softwares. I would love to hear what you edit with down below in the comments. So are you a Premiere person, a Final Cut person, a DaVinci person, an iMovie, and any whatever else? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, bye y'all.